Warwick Masteries. Okay, so they changed the fervor of battle since, uh, like the dust has settled a little bit on the Thunderlord's changes, I guess you could say. And this has scaling now. It's not quite as good early and has longer cooldown. It's still pretty much unchanged for most junglers that used it before. Um, but what ended up changing is Fervor Battle works on Warwick's ultimate now. So let's say you're going in for a combo on someone that you have Blood Sun on, you just like, you can walk up to them really quick, maybe get a Q off and an auto, and then ultimate, but then you're already at like five stacks. And your ultimate is capable of stacking up Fervor Battle as well. So since it can apply it and stack it, it's the best keystone for him now. Uh, decision factors up here. Sorcery is not really that relevant. Uh, there's, what, two castable abilities on Warwick. Not really worth it. The extra attack speed is nice, and it's noticeable when you don't have it. So you go Fury, and let me just talk about runes really quick. This is my generic AP jungler. Or just, you know, whatever jungler age and get a little bit of flat damage in there. You can run armor pen if you want, maybe like five armor pen and the rest attack speed. Um, I really don't notice too much of a difference when I run armor pen and attack speed. So I just prefer to run all attack speed and then like a little bit of flat damage. Well, just most of the reds at least. And... The decision point here is Warwick has decent sustain in the jungle already, so you've got uh, maybe not as much damage as you want, so this point allows you to deal more damage, and it fits his his kit thematically, because he can restore that health with his Q or his auto attacks. And then Vampirism, of course, that's going to have a uh, nice impact on your clearing ability, and also your 1v1. Bounty Hunter is a hard decision to make here actually because Oppressor still buffs your damage in the jungle, which Assassin doesn't anymore, but it did buff it up to 2% increased damage. I think I would prefer to go Bounty Hunter because if you ever hit late game on Warwick, then you have like legitimate 1v5 carry potential if the fights go a certain way. And then... I would take Piercing Thoughts over Battering Blows here because Battering Blows takes a while to get going. It takes a while for people to hit large uh, armor values. Most of Warwick's damage is going to be magic damage anyway. So his passive, his Q, and his ultimate all deal magic damage. So 7% magic penetration. And it's also going to be more damage early because... Every champion has 30 base magic resist, and most people run extra magic resist, so you're talking about 30 to 40 magic resist uh, early game. And then most tanks get magic resist per level nowadays, so this is pretty meaningful, especially when you're talking about Warwick's Q doing percent damage. Uh, Fervor of Battle we talked about, of course, being really good. Savagery is a pretty obvious one. And then, out of these three masteries, I think this is kind of a toss-up. You just kind of go with what you want. If you want the extra 1v5 potential, you go Assassin. Maybe you want the utility from the extra buffs. I probably would go Assassin just because that's my playstyle. I'm not really going to get too much benefit from Secret Stash because I go Refillable Potion. Warwick really doesn't need Hunter's Potion either, so I just sell uh, Refillable Potion at a certain point. Usually when I complete Devourer, uh, you really don't need any sustain at that point. Maybe just a little bit better management of your mana. And then Merciless and Dangerous Game. This mastery just adds so much damage uh, this season. As soon as they're below 40% health, 5% increased damage. It's pretty much a no-brainer if you're going 18 points in Ferocity. You're almost always going to pick up Merciless. Uh, unless mana is that important to you. Which even then, I still think Merciless is better than 90% of the time. 
But yeah, you wouldn't really get any use out of Bandit, so... Go Dangerous Game. And... Let me think. You start Machete and Refillable Potion. Then you go, like, Red Smite, probably. Seder Devourer. And then, like, Iceborne Gauntlet, or... Some kind of CDR item. Depending on what their team comp is, uh, depending on what their team comp is dealing for their damage, Warwick is gonna scale really good with flat resistances because uh, his Q gives him health back, and it's just going to multiply the value of his life steal and all his regeneration uh, by having higher resistances. I don't necessarily think that. Uh, you have to play around the magic penetration. I think you can still build him the way you normally would. And maybe some games that includes Wood's End. Maybe some games that includes Blade of the Ruin King. But, uh... You probably don't need both. You have, like, pl plenty of damage other than that. But there might be a way to do some one-shot build like that. That's a possibility. It would have to be like Sated Devour, Blade of the Ruin King, Iceborne Gauntlet. Probably you get Swifty Boots just because uh, they're pretty broken. You probably really don't need Magic Penetration Boots. Maybe you would go CDR and then you would get the extra Summoner Spell Reduction. But okay, so where are we at? Where Blade of the Ruin King, Sated Devour, Boots. Iceborne Gauntlet, that's four items. And then out of your last two item slots, maybe you go like Sunfire and Abyssal Scepter. Or like two tank items. Either way. If you hit six items on Warwick, you just need to pray that you're going to win anyways, because most people have picked up QSS or Xhanius by then. And on Warwick, you really don't want the game to go past four items anyway, so... uh. That semi-offensive build is actually pretty relevant. <laughs>